Part of the challenge of wearing gloves uh, or a whole spacesuit outside is what temperature is it? And a lot of people think space might be hot or space might be cold. In, in reality, it's, it's kind of both because if the sun's shining directly on you, it's like the worst day in the middle of the hottest desert on earth. It gets up to hotter than boiling water, 150 degrees Celsius. But that's the part of you that's in the sun. So if you think about your glove, it has to be able to grab on something that is one and a half times the temperature of boiling water without letting your hand burn. But on your other side, in the shade, it is colder than the coldest winter's day at the South Pole. It's minus 140 degrees Celsius. And so the suit is protecting you from a plus 150 on this side, the minus 140 on that side. And your gloves have to allow you to pick up a hammer that might have been in the sun, plus 150, or it might have been in the shade, minus 140, without immediately burning or giving frostbite to your palm. So if you're a space glove designer, you have to design it for huge temperature extremes. But also, the spacesuit is a bubble around your body. It's pressurized. And the American spacesuit is pressurized to about the same as a volleyball, an indoor volleyball, a white volleyball. The Russian suit, the Orlan suit that these gloves are from, is even pressurized higher than that, stiffer than a volleyball. So imagine if every time you wanted to bend your fingers, you had to squeeze against the, the inflated pressure, like if you put on some rubber gloves and then inflated it to the pressure of a volleyball, just how tiring that would be on your hands after a while. So you really have to be clever how you design the glove so that you're not just fighting the balloon nature of it all the time, but it's got some internal structure that will allow you to have the natural motion of your hand for hours and hours without your hand becoming completely exhausted.